Tucked within the red rock canyons marking the Colorado-Utah border lies a special place, Hovenweep, where cracked towers cling to desert cliffs, still whispering tales from long ago. Step into these quiet ruins and the stones themselves seem to pose questions unsolved for centuries. Who designed awe-inspiring buildings aligned with stars and seasons? What drove whole communities to blend their worldviews into the surrounding rock? Most puzzling, what hardship caused these gifted builders to leave their soaring sandstone villages behind in the 1200s? As birds circle weathered doors and flawless walls fade in memory, four short riddles establish layers upon layers of mystery. Each stone shivers with artists' lost hopes. Every round ceremonial room awaits to share smoldering stories with those who pause to hear them. Only by actually visiting this sacred place can we get a small look at the old world now gone inside. The beautiful towers still stand tall, quietly asking, will you help reveal their secrets before the final stones fall apart? Evidence suggests ancestral Puebloan peoples thrived in the Four Corners region spanning Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, and Utah for over 2,000 years. They evolved complex and vibrant cultures on the Colorado Plateau, creating not just functional shelters, but integrating spiritual beliefs into the very foundations of their architecture. The iconic sites protected within Hovenweep National Monument offer remarkable insight into the cultural sophistication these early Puebloan communities achieved before migrating away around 1276 AD. As we begin exploring the ghostly remnants left behind, I'm eager to learn what clues they can share to help solve the riddle of why the ancestral Puebloans abandoned the spiritual homes they had invested generations in building. We'll visit six impressive village groups encompassing both cliff dwellings and mesa top settlements, each representing enormous community effort and vision. Our visit to Hovenweep starts at the Square Tower Visitor Center, where we learn about the history of this ancient site. Hovenweep protects six old Puebloan village groups built between 500 to 1300 AD in Little Ruin Canyon and other small branching canyons. The Pueblo people cleverly combined creative building styles with respect for the positions of the sun, moon, and stars. Many structures have strategically placed openings and angles designed to connect with sunlight and create shadows that mark equinoxes, solstices, and other astronomical events. The Puebloans' incredible stonework, which precisely interacts with the celestial alignments, still impresses modern engineers today. Why they walked away at a cultural peak remains subject to debate, the stones as silent now as the ghosts who seem to still inhabit them. As we prepare to traverse the ruins ourselves, the ranger reminds us these sites still hold profound meaning for modern Puebloan tribes. He urges mindful exploration and maintenance of this sacred site. Our first glimpse overlooks the expanse of Little Ruin Canyon itself, named for the copious remnants of village complexes tucked onto nearly every mesa or promontory along its cliff sides. The famous square tower ruin across from us definitely deserves its name. Its remarkable four-floor tower stands out in the area. Built on top of a massive rock formation, the landmark square tower makes you wonder if its builders dared their clever design to challenge both gravity and time. So far, it looks like their daring gamble is winning. We walk all around the edge of the canyon to see more fantastic buildings. D-shaped, multiple-floor homes known as Unit Pueblos grip impossibly narrow ledges tightly like stubborn birds, with their bending walls fitting perfectly to the twisted shapes of the rocks below. Despite the very hard and challenging landscape, the builders found many creative designs. Interconnected housing clusters, compact and cozy sheltered spaces, and the iconic tall towers that inspired names like Hovenweep Castle and Twin Towers. The builders use their creative architecture solutions everywhere, even in the very difficult terrain. Behind faces worn by hundreds of years, the skilled work still shines with amazing accuracy. One can only picture the huge community effort needed to dig out, shape, and place the interlocking pieces of sandstone and shale that make up these remarkable complexes. Their mix with the surrounding landscape highlights respect for the land itself. Smooth stones blend into spaces naturally carved into canyon walls. Round tower rooms match the circular closure of kivas, dug-in ritual areas reflecting the womb of Mother Earth. Here in this harsh desert, 
two groups even crafted unique water containment and diversion features to channel vital rainfall, an engineering marvel predating European settlement of the West by centuries. Little Ruin Canyon must have felt like a relative oasis, yet something motivated the architects to depart even this prized place literally built from the bedrock beneath them. What ghosts or memories haunted them from these hand-carved homes? As we walk through sites like Holly Ruins with its many ceremonial kivas, or look up at the tall Holly Tower covering whole families, I wonder what life was like inside these walls 800 years ago. Blending building, farming, art, astronomy, and spirituality, their culture seems anything but simple. What bonded such advanced communities before unknown dangers or choices broke those ties? Standing in well-kept kivas still circled by pillars, spaces, and symbolic sipapu floor holes, one can easily picture rituals calling ancestors, good harvests, and cosmic order happening by firelight. How painful it must have been when finally forced to chant goodbyes instead as their people decided escaping was the only hope. We finish our visit at the top of the mesa, where toes of sandstone foundations and outlines of circular kivas are nearly all that is left of once lively homes at sage-covered sites like Horseshoe House. Here, the huge panorama stretching in all ways makes the Pueblo and Love of Heights clear, as well as the appeal of Hovenweep's isolated placement crossing canyons and bordering states. Perhaps threats came closer from one direction, or resources grew short from another. Standing at the crumbling edge between the ordered village footprint and wild open prairie, we can only guess what emotional reason finally pulled generations of ancestral Puebloans away from this homeland painfully stitched rock by rock into its very self. Even with scarcely a remnant remaining on the lonely wind-whipped overlook, one can still sense the powerful attachment binding these people to the towers, kivas, and hand-carved niches making up their ancestral habitat for over 300 years. What wrenching inner compass point finally guided them to reluctantly leave it all behind? We can only wonder while staring across the silent centuries. Whatever the breaking strain, their manifold voices seem to still murmur on the wind sighing through fractured sandstone walls. Abandoned kivas open to the sky. The echo of spirits now mingled into desert varnish and dust. We marvel at what these architectural ghost towns can still reveal about priorities, persistence, and human ingenuity. Why the ancestral Puebloans left Hovenweep remains a mystery, but their incredible history keeps unfolding for new eyes to admire and new generations to uncover. As I watch shadows grow and canyons fade from rust to purple under starlight, I better understand those who danced across this harsh but beautiful land for centuries leaving their rhythms carved into towers even time struggles to topple. What more inspiring legacy could anyone strive for?